All right. Uh, well, it's lovely to be here. So I'm Daniel Schiff. Uh, I study AI policy and ethics. I've been in the AI ethics field for about 15 years, so kind of watched the trajectory of this discourse. Uh, I'm not a, a health specialist, really, or a lawyer. Um, just really uh, policy, science, uh, and, and ethics. And part of what I've been looking at in the last few years is deep fakes, sort of tracking the initial conversations on this when people were worried and not worried. <clears throat> and I'm just going to kind of think out loud for the next few minutes. Uh, one of the projects that this uh, working group that the majority of us are involved in is looking at the, the ethics of synthetic data. So I thought, you know, maybe there's some parallels between these two spaces worth uh, thinking about. And I took Neil's idea of using uh, Dolly 3 here to generate all of my images. I think this was like appropriately meta because there's all sorts of odd things that show up. Like it looks like there's almost two twins here who were depicted to do this presentation. So why is this? Uh, I have no idea, but this is something that AI is now uh, permeating. Okay, so uh, deep fakes and synthetic data, uh, both coming out of generative AI revolution. I think everyone will be familiar, but for deep fakes, we're talking about uh, synthetically generated audio, uh, video, images. Uh, worth pointing out, we also have something called uh, cheap fakes or shallow fakes. So these could be simpler techniques where you're just sort of slowing down audio or splicing an audio to maybe mislead people. And I think we have parallels in synthetic data, which can be really, really fancy or it can be done in, in a pretty simple way. But essentially, uh, or you know, often thinking about tabular data, but uh, events <clears throat> uh, that are not in the real world or kind of inspired by patterns in the real world. Okay, so we've heard about this a lot already. I think this won't be totally novel, but we know that benefits for both of these uh, areas, but sort of shared risks, privacy, bias, misuse that we're trying to grapple with. Okay, so what can we learn from the last six, seven years of the conversation about the different uh, components of the research agenda that have emerged? how the discourse has emerged in social policy settings, regulatory stance, uh, how governance has developed, uh, how humans interact with these technical systems. So let me just put forward a few uh, ideas. Uh, and I think many of these will, again, be familiar to people in the room. But hopefully there's some uh, patterns here that might be useful or, or lenses, uh, ways to think about this. OK, so first, both of these come with, by themselves, positive use cases. So for synthetic data, we're definitely thinking about increased performance, uh, improved analytics. We're thinking about privacy-preserving functions and how that can enable data sharing. We've talked a lot about how data sharing can enable a lot of good things system-wide. <clears throat> Deep fakes, interestingly, used for entertainment, uh, used for education, used for art. Uh, we could think about things like synthetic data also being used for cases like education. At the same time, we have uh, in the deep fakes context, lots of misinformation, disinformation. Uh, this has led to things like electoral interference, uh, accusing politicians of sexual scandals. Uh, there was a coup in Gabon that was uh, spurred on just by the accusation of a deep fake. So sort of harms to our uh, informational environment. And we also have you know, financial and sexual uh, uh, misconduct. Uh, so common challenges we've talked about, bias, just performance by itself. Uh, <clears throat> as well as uh, areas like abuse. So could we see intentional data poisoning for synthetic data? Or could we see, for example, misuse coming just from over-trusting AI systems or under-trusting AI systems or using synthetic data or AI uh, in biomedical contexts when there's other things that we should be doing and we're sort of uh, uh, handicapping ourselves by uh, taking the sleep. So some generic challenges and uh, other issues we've been thinking about what does the consent regime look like here? What does intellectual property look like? When do we want transparency? When is this actually helpful for trust? Uh, and how do we actually protect our original data generation infrastructure rather than sort of supplant this all with uh, synthetic approaches? When do we need to preserve these sort of old school methods? Okay, so a really core way of thinking about this that will be familiar is our sort of balance between innovation and regulation uh, or balance between benefits and risks. And this is not just sort of a generic conversation, but we have issues to grapple with, like how much do we prioritize one uh, over the other in terms of our work? So how many uh, bioethicists do we have in a room of data scientists? Uh, how much energy are we investing in the two of these? And to what extent do we take this seriously or take this superficially? So this is a conversation I think uh, is gonna unfold. Okay, so I'll go through uh, just a few uh, things that could pop up in the synthetic data and in biomedical AI space broadly. So one is, what our global standards and best practices would look like. Another is how should we think about education or stakeholder engagement and awareness? And then finally, how do we think about responsibility and governance at different layers? Okay, 
So starting with standards and best practices, there's a whole lot to do here, a whole lot to draw on here. So in our kind of data conversations and standards, we have collection, now we have standards for data generation, de novo, uh, storage, retention, as well as associated things like security and cybersecurity. Uh, so how do we actually approach things like data minimization in a context where AI is greedy? Uh, these are things that, some things we have information about, some things we're gonna be uh, developing. What's our validation regime? Uh, is this coming from software testing and validation? Is this coming from algorithmic impact assessment? So, you know, both our kind of accuracy and performance conversations, uh, individual and uh, group biases. Do we get into broader types of, of ethical assessment? So this group has talked about checklists, and I think Laura is gonna talk about that in a little bit. Uh, are we looking at human rights as a framework? Are we looking at well-being as a framework? Or are we you know, adopting a very technical set of practices? We've talked about how this also plays out in the context of organizations. So uh, what does this mean for data scientists or design teams or business teams? What does this mean for hospital systems that are procuring software systems? Uh, how do we actually customize this for given context, given that small versus large hospitals, uh, health systems, the actual uh, infrastructure they have, uh, how we approach business practices, and then uh, our kind of other institutional uh, interventions. So IRBs, uh, academic venues like journals and conferences, uh, what the FDA is up to uh, in the US. So a whole universe of things that we have to uh, grapple with here. Some of which we have things to draw on, some of which will be uh, pretty novel to work through. <clears throat> Okay, and I'll emphasize here that these are not just technical practices. I think this is also familiar to this group, but we're not just talking about the accuracy or bias levels of <clears throat> synthetic data sets. Okay, so what does this mean for uh, the extent to which the public needs to be involved? Uh, Meg was talking about the role of community here. Uh, this has been a big conversation in the AI ethics space. Uh, one of the insights from the deepfake space is that the technological interventions were really not sufficient here. So uh, we have uh, widespread uh, misinformation, uh, uptake of false information, uh, even for stuff that is you know, very convincingly false and very uh, heavily fact-checked. So being able to detect a deep fake really doesn't begin to solve your problem here. Um, one difference I might see here is that while the, the deep fake and misinformation conversation has been a lot about public and media literacy, maybe synthetic data or data in a biomedical context is more expert driven. Maybe we aren't involving the public as much and I'd be curious what people think about that. So do we care if we have diverse teams who are, divining, uh, who are designing synthetic data sets in the same way and that's gonna change how much we actually feel like we need to take transparency seriously uh, or remediation. Okay, so options, academic space to promote awareness, workshops, conferences, special issues. Uh, in our educational system, I haven't heard us talk too much about that yet, but courses, training, credentials, integrating into our data science courses or our health courses, uh, organizational consulting and auditing. So we have a, an auditing ecosystem emerging in the AI space. So what might that look like here? And then we have this other layer of media, civil society that could serve as watchdogs for uh, kind of bad incidents here. And then finally, do we actually wanna engage uh, the public in these conversations? Uh, if so, how? Okay, and then sort of last chunk here, I often think about governance uh, across different layers. I think Neil's also pointing out we have a bunch of half measures or quarter measures. So how many of these can we stack to get kind of a, a cohesive picture here? So starting with uh, the individual level, um, especially those of you who are involved in ethics education, how does an individual data scientist or healthcare practitioner learn and continue to think about and continue to update themselves about how they need to be approaching uh, biomedical AI or synthetic data in their work? We have our organizational interventions so all of our different developers, companies, government agencies. So as I talked about, we're talking about developing standards, practices, uh, norms are important, uh, and utilization, design, procurement. And then we have other kind of systemic interventions. So are we talking about third party uh, detection efforts to look at whether synthetic data sets are uh, well created and reliable and robust in different situations? So technical systemic efforts, are we talking about third party evaluation uh, just on the impact side or also on the design side? Are we talking about a technical infrastructure or a social infrastructure like a public literacy campaign or curriculum campaign? Uh, and in the AI space, we're growing uh, into an interest in incident reporting. So might we also draw on that in this space where we do have some infrastructure for reporting things like adverse events, but maybe not this kind of adverse event. 
Uh, and then lastly, I was glad to hear this discussed also, but maybe we need uh, authoritative or trusted data sets that we know can be uh, uh, used reliably. So creating a kind of labeling uh, or, or, or uh, registration system. Okay, so just a, a few things that I've been noticing uh, that could be relevant uh, in this context, but really just starting to think out loud and hoping to learn a lot more from you all uh, going forward. So <clears throat> thanks very much.